You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. We want you to help us keep the conversation moving forward. You can do that by supporting the show. Share it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description, so you can do just that. Oh, Ryan, do I have a story for you oh, today. Story time. First, before we do anything else, how's your voice feeling? You a little bit better? Uh, we're getting there. You kind of you, you got some bass in your voice, Ooh, Darth Vader. Stuff. My voice. Can you go, can you go, uh, baby? Oh my gosh, I burped. Excuse Hold me. Hold on, here we go. Baby, lock them doors and turn the lights down low. Y'all didn't know he could do that, huh? Y'all thought he was front on y'all with that high voice, man. Ryan can, hey, look, even when you're not sick, Ryan can hit some bass. I'm not going to lie to you. It's it's weird. It don't sound like he's got a bass voice, but Ryan can hit some I bass. Got, I got a decent range. Quick question for you. Yes. Did I do that? <laughs> I fear that the answer is yes. Ooh. Uh, Urkel style. All right, so this is the segment of our show. It's called Did I Do That? Where we recount a story that maybe we're a little bit embarrassed about. Maybe mm. we're a little bit, did I do that? Sure. Did I really sure, do sure. that? This comes to you from when I was in high school. Story time, right? Ooh, okay. I was in high school. I was like 16, 17. Sure. Some, I, I was sort of a dork. I was sort of a... Same. I don't want to say loser, because sure. I did have friends. Sure, sure, sure. I, I, But I wasn't like a social, popular guy. I was sort of... I was sort I was just kind of dorky. But in a dorky way it was like when a dorkable was just coming on the scene, you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't like dorks like like back in the 80s, 90s dorks were like you don't want to be that. Right. Kind of mid 2000s, like I graduated in 2010, a dorkable was just starting to appear. So it yeah. was like you're dorky but you that's kind of cute. But you're kind of so charming. Kinda charming. Yeah, yeah. So but all that to say all dorks have something. Some dorks are knife guys, like they have a knife collection. Mm. Some dorf dorks are like, they're super into, you know, whatever. All those teenage boys, they're into that. A lot right. of them are like knives, daggers, blades. You know, they always go to the... Mine was fire. We would light fires. We light. We lit stuff on sure. fire. We would light ourselves on fire. We we did that. We Hold would take... On. You light yourselves mm-hmm, on fire? Many times. Many times. We would take Axe body spray. Oh, and no. we. We'd spray symbol like the Superman symbol, angel wings. We'd spray stuff on our chest, on our pants, on our back, um, and we'd light it up. And it would, oh, oh dude, I'm on fire. And we'd pat it out. We just were obsessed with that. One of the times we lit, we took a Chef Boyardee can and we rinsed it out and we sprayed a ton of hairspray in it. Like lit it up with hairspray. Lit it and we'd go, whoa, and we'd like come up out of the can. Whoa, whoa dude, it almost got me in the face. <laughs> okay. So one time we were burning a pile of leaves, right? We had a big pile of leaves in in my friend's backyard. I'm not yeah. going to say this friend's name because sure. this I don't want to implicate him. Yeah, names innocent. have been changed. His name was uh, 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 B. Duberson. How about that? Sure. His name was B. Duberson. Okay. <laughs> David's, that's a fake name, but that it's was a fake name. That's what we call him, B. Duberson. We were at B. Duberson's house, right? right? right. And we lit up a bunch of leaves in a big pile. Okay. It got out of control. It was sure. a hot, I'm sorry, it was a dry, cool day. And that wind took it Which away, is right? not when you want to burn no, leaves. No, but we were doing this thing where we were burning the leaves. We were seeing how big it could get before we'd get scared and stomp it out. It got big to the point where we couldn't stomp it out. And it caught a nearby tree on fire. Oh, no. Now, B. Dubberson's house was woods adjacent, if you know what I mean. Uh-oh. So... Fire, as you know, is not going to just burn up one tree. Right. It's going to burn up two <laughs> it trees. It tends to spread. Soon, two big, and these weren't trees like big, tall, like wooded trees. These were like little shrubby trees, but it was right next to big, and we could, there was four of us. We couldn't get this fire out. We could, and, and I mean, I genuinely thought my life was over. I was watching flames just spread to trees, and I was like, I can either panic just rising. It was panic. It was sheer animal panic. And I was like, I can run Mm. and deny ever knowing these people. I could get in my car and drive away and deny knowing these people. Or I could just sit down and watch this thing burn. And I started scrambling for my keys. I was going to run. I was going to leave my friends. I started sprinting towards my car. They were calling me, John, John, you can't, you can't get. I don't remember how, but somehow we got it under control. We got it. I think we started throwing dirt on it and stuff. But when I tell you that I almost burned down a section of like Vicksboro Road woods, <laughs> I am not joking. 
I thought I was going to prison. Wow. I thought I was going to jail. We, Have had, you, we had different high school experiences. Did you, I was going to say, did you ever <laughs> light a fire and lose control of it no, rapidly? No, no, no. <laughs> we didn't ever do anything like that. No, there wasn't any like fire burning. But but we did stuff like kind of push the envelope, teenage stuff. We uh -huh. did that. Uh, the, one of the biggest things we did, which the cops came, but they we didn't get in trouble for it. We I don't know why we decided this, but my friends and I, I was I was a theater kid. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so theater kids are nerdy, but... But we, there's like a band of us. So yes. There's strength in numbers. I like theater kids because theater kids are uncool and they lean into it. Yeah. You, you just embrace it. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Um, the, if you make fun of yourself, then no one else, you know, so no one else can. theater kids among themselves are all like gods. They're like, they're right. just, oh, hundred percent. They're elite. Yeah. yeah. You, you just uh, hype each other up. So we decided one night we were hanging out and then we, we were, we wound up through a series of events, which if you, I mean, you knew, I know you know from the teenage years, we were in a a grocery store parking lot yep, yep, at yep. 1.30 in the morning 100%. playing Frisbee and blasting in sync. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in sync. Yep. I'd have been on board. If you said Blink-182, I'd be like, yeah, no, we, we were blasting. No, it was boy bands. Yeah, we were okay. blasting in sync. Um, and the cops pulled up and they're like, hey guys, everything okay? <laughs> like, yes, sir, we're, we're fine. We'll go. I'm sorry. We were just, we were just hanging out. Like, Do you remember no, no the problem. parking lot? We just want to make sure. Do you remember what parking lot? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Well, you, but you don't want to say? No. Okay. That's fine. Uh, that's it, was, fine. it was around the corner from where I grew up. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, it was, um, yeah, it was, we were just in the parking lot yeah. at 1 30 in the morning playing Frisbee. It was like high school juniors and seniors, and we thought it was the most normal thing in the world. Yeah, we did that. And the cops were like, hey guys, uh, it's 1 30 in the morning. So <laughs> Y'all gotta let's, go. Let's turn the volume down. <laughs> Y'all gotta like, Yes, sir. I'm sorry. We'll did, go. They were gonna let you stay? Yeah, they, they didn't care. But but you got to turn the... Okay, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. We, but, but we did pack it in and, and head home. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Man, those are those were fun years, yeah. man. Those are fun years when you just do dumb stuff and you don't even Teenage have hijinks. any reason Looking for it. Looking back, I'm like, why on earth did we do that? What what was fun about that? But in the moment, you're like, this is the greatest idea we have yeah, ever absolutely. had. We're going to go to a Taco Bell parking lot and just hang out and stinking someone's 100%. shirt is going to end up off. Fun. We did this thing where uh, we, did, we only did it a couple times, but we would bring... Each of us would bring $20 and we would go shopping for like a total outfit at Goodwill mm -hmm. and the more like ridiculous we can make it the better <laughs> and so then we would buy those clothes wear those clothes and then I'll go out to dinner together. Was your, oh that's pretty funny that's pretty stinking funny y'all were creative man we just lit stuff on fire <laughs> yeah that's theater kids was I mean, Elizabeth we, part of this no uh, your wife not really no because we were we were two years apart in high school so she'd already graduated when I oh I got you that's um, right you were dating a college girl I was yeah that's pretty was. cool yeah that's pretty cool what were some of y'all's teenage hijinks that's what I want to know write in and let us know 252-582-5028 or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com we'll be right back what's going on listeners my name is John and I'm David and we hope you are enjoying the podcast thus far you know, we really appreciate how many of you download the podcast every day. Right. But we also want to remind you that we are first and foremost a radio show. Clearview Today is actually syndicated through the Truth Network. And we just want to let you know right now that in addition to hosting the all-time best Christian talk show of all time. Hashtag Clearview Today. Hashtag Clearview Today. The Truth Network also, as it turns out, has an extensive library of Christian programming. We really love everything they're doing at the Truth Network because the whole goal is to encourage challenge, confront, and uplift listeners with the life-changing truth of Jesus Christ through Christian Talk Radio. And listen, we know we are not the only show wanting to expand its audience. So if you have a vision for your show or for your ministry, why don't you consider syndicating your show through the Truth Network? Because they rely on decades of experience of self-syndication with a full array of features for your long-form or short-form content. Make sure you visit the Truth Network online today at Truth network.com or you can give them a call at 336-759-0363 again that's 336-759-0363 well john are you ready <laughs> i was born ready my friend let's hop right back in all right Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right. And we're here once again in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abadan Shah, who's a PhD in New Testament textual criticism. Dr. Shah, I hate to say that you're sharing the studio with an arsonist today. Arsonist? That's, well, I don't believe... It, 
Yeah, arch that's in function. Felon. Yeah, you know, yeah, we possible. Don't, we don't know. We were talking about stories where we were involved in childhood teenage shenanigans that just went a little bit too yeah. far. You know, we, <laughs> did you ever find yourself in a situation when you were young where it's like, why did I put myself in this situation? Why am I here right now? How I mean, like a get, prank? Yeah, like a prank. Maybe or a like, prank or just like you're with a group of friends and you kind of hype each other up like this is going to be great. This but then you're yeah. in really over fun. your head and it's like, I might okay. get some yeah. real trouble here. Uh Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm trying to think. Um, most of the time, I was a good kid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not get in trouble. I did not cause trouble. You know, other parents would be like, you should be more like that boy Abaddon. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was remember, always like that. Do you remember the, the sugar cane story, the skipping school yeah. to go to the sugar cane field? I thought you, you meant like a little boy. No, no, no. Like teenager. Like like when you're, like teen, when you're kind of skirting the line between like, I feel like, <laughs> like, for, like for us, it was like, I'm... Um, I'm I'm old enough to know that playing with fire is not a good idea. Okay. I'm fully old enough. Right. 17, 18. Should be. Yeah. Right. But we're lighting a bunch of leaves on fire and now a bunch of trees go up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That mm -hmm. that's kind of what happened. So I panicked. So yeah. I was wondering like if you ever like if you ever found yourself as a teenager or just someone old enough to know better <laughs> in a situation that just got out of your control really quickly. So it goes back to Christmas time. Uh, -huh. uh this one just came to me. This was Christmas carols. Okay. okay, Christmas carols. And in India, you know, you have firecrackers sure, and all sure. of that. I mean, that's a big deal. Now, we don't usually light them in the middle of the night mm -hmm. as we're singing. Because Christmas carols, at least when I was growing up, was like an all-night thing. Mm -hmm. You begin at 9 o'clock in the evening, all right? And you go until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And people, wow. and people want that. They want it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't want it anymore, by the way. Oh, I went wow. back I went back last year for my mom's, you know, sickness, yeah. and then eventually it became a funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, and I asked uh, people, I was like, so uh, y'all still doing the Christmas carols? No, we, what we do now is we start at like 7, and we finish up like about 11 o'clock at night. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> really? Oh, so y'all don't no, do the all, not all night? Man, nobody wants to do that anymore. I'm like, oh. what a sad thing. And I'm so yeah. glad that I got to enjoy that like staying period. out all night. Yeah. The period of history that probably will not come back. Yeah. 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 Like getting in our, you know, putting on jackets and, and you know, sometimes Christmas would be cold, putting on our jackets, sweaters, and then going out with mm -hmm. a group of people and, and had a great time. So one time we were um, at this one particular person's home mm -hmm. and <laughs> this one, we, we, we'd called the adult men uncles. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And ladies would be aunties. Mm -hmm. So this uncle, his name was George. Mm -hmm. Is <laughs> okay. a J.W. George. That was his name. I don't know what it stood for. But anyways, uh, so he, uh, um, no, I'm sorry. That's a different, this guy's last name was George as well, but it was, it was Yusuf George. Okay. Mm. So like Joseph George. Okay. okay. And uh, so he he was a singer. He was not, not you know, he was leading the music. And he decided to um, join us, join our group. And he was so tired. <laughs> he was so <laughs> tired. And he is sitting by the window and singing in this person's home. We're all singing. And some of the guys decided to wake him up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> by lighting a firecracker <laughs> on the windowsill. <laughs> where he was asleep. Where he was asleep. <laughs> oh, no. And, I mean, it went off. It was not a small little firecracker, like a you know, like, not like a little poplar. No, it was a boom. <laughs> <laughs> All we see is. But you weren't part of that group. I was not part of that. I was. Oh, I was man. inside the house. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I was one, playing one of the musical instruments. It's right. called a harmonium. It's like um, it's like a accordion. Yeah. But like, you know, you, you set it down. Yeah. Mm. And so I was playing the accordion, and I knew what was happening because I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, that's a big one. Oh, oh no! So it, so it exploded right under his head, uh, and right behind him. Oh gosh! And and it was a it was a barred window, and so all that smoke whoosh, <laughs> in the room. <laughs> and a very very mad uncle. He was angry. <laughs> he was. He was no longer in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> Christmas spirit. He like. What? <laughs> he got up and he walked out there. And of course, everybody ran off. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there was, they were part of the group. Yeah. So it's not hard to figure out who did that. That is, that is stinking He was funny. mad. He could not have here anymore. Yeah, no, he was gone. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas, uh, Christmas passed him right What did you get right for Christmas? Down. Huh? I got a hearing <laughs> aid. What? 
What did you say? Shout uh, out to uh, Uncle George. Uncle, Uncle George. Uncle Yusuf George. Yusuf George. Yeah, yeah, that was still that was one that came. Think? Huh? Still living, you think? Oh, no, no, he died. He's gone. When I went back home to visit um, my mom, of course, mm-hmm. and then the funeral, his daughter came. Okay. Uh, and, I mean, she is, you know, she's in her late 50s. Okay. Mm. okay. And uh, she came, and she had her own children who were... You know, in their twenties, but they could all hear. They, yeah, <laughs> they were all, and I was like, "So, how is your mom?" They're like, "Oh, mom died like twenty five years ago." Oh, I'm like, "Oh, I'm oh, sorry. sorry." I heard, I knew about uncle passing away. Yeah, I just didn't know about. Um, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it was it was funny. I still remember that scene. He's like over there. He he had his chair <laughs> leaning back, and I'm over there across from him in this living room of this person mm-hmm. playing that, and I saw him like. Oh, <laughs> but you can't stop. How, it, how old do you think you guys were? I was probably about thirteen. That's that's fourteen years that's old. That's not right, man. And I remember yeah. going like this. <laughs> boom! There it goes. And there goes Uncle. Seen him shoot oh, up out no. of that chair. Oh, he did. He did. He went out there. He said a few things that yeah, that <laughs> was not very Christian. <laughs> oh man! But in that moment when you have this massive atom bomb going off behind yeah. you, so here's the thing. Startled awake. Did your dad think it was funny? Oh, uh, we told him. Okay, we told him, there. and he just he just kind of laughed, and and he just went off. There you go. Yeah, but he came and complained to my dad. He said some <laughs> of, some of the young people in our church have no respect for the adult. <laughs> Hey man, what do you want me to do? It's oh, Christmas, man. Like kids, kids are kids. Yeah. Teenagers are gonna be teenagers. Your dad should be like, what? Pick up the ladder. Can't hear you. Uh, uh. The verse of the day today is coming to us from First Corinthians chapter ten, verse twenty-four. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Mm, the you know someone should have read that to the kids at your dad's <laughs> right? church. <Yep. laughs> they were not I was looking just after thinking uncle's that. I was well-being. Like somebody should have read this verse before it, poor Uncle George got a know, firecracker. In the yeah. Yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> the Corinthians, they really weren't interested in people's well-being. You know, Paul mm. had to really, <laughs> kind of like this the uncle, Paul had to whoop up on these guys a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Teach them how to respect, how to respect. Oh, my goodness. I hadn't thought about uncle. You would, yeah, yeah. He would have definitely said, you know, right there. You should have thought of my ears. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I yeah. can't out here. This I lost out my ear. This is not uh, ears. living out First Corinthians. No, no it's not. not living it out. It is not. Dr. Shaw, I like your sticker, my friend. Thank your, you. Your I voted sticker. Oh, very right. nice. He voted, uh, we did some early voting. And this voting or early voting or voting itself was very special because it was not just me and Nicole because usually just Nicole and I will go and vote Nicholas came along with yeah, us yeah, nice. yeah. our son how That's is this awesome. your first is this your first election for his first election? No, no, it's not his first election. This is his first presidential election. That's, yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I meant. That's what I should have said. First yeah. presidential election. Nice. He's voted before for the governor or, or um, whatever, whatever primaries. Mm-hmm. But this is his first election. So so we uh, had to do a selfie. I love it, yes. dude. I love we it. We did a selfie. To. Have to. You got, yeah. you got to do that's a That's a momentous yeah. occasion. Yeah, oh, and it is. And it's showing people that you're not ashamed to be out there doing what you're doing, doing your civic duty, voting. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot like uh, my friend B. Duberson's uh, yard, a lot of yeah. people would look at our nation and say, this thing is aflame right now. This yeah. thing what, is, is, what is it? This is the, the guy, I didn't want to say his name uh, just in case the cops are still looking for him, but <laughs> his, his, he's the guy whose yard we, we set completely Almost, on. Oh. Like, I didn't want to. I don't want to. I was like, name. who is this? <laughs> this is the house that John and friends almost burned down. Oh, the, wo- oh. the woods too. But I'm saying, uh, I was just trying to get us into gotcha. the segue. Like, much like his yard and potentially his house, people would look at our nation and say, "This thing is just up in flames yeah. right now." And and people, I think, really have written off America. Mm-hmm. It's sad. These are Americans yeah. that are are writing off their own country. Yeah, and it's out of desperation. Yeah. It's out of frustration because in the past, I would say. Oh my goodness, since 2008, we have been in a downward trajectory. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, for me, it has been very sad to watch and just think, you know, what's happened? Right. I would say not 2008, I would say probably 2009, mm-hmm. 2010. Yeah. This is something that you and Nicole cover in your book, but I wanted to just kind of bring it up for our, our radio audience because I thought it was such a great chapter. It's chapter 24, I think. But, and, and a truly, your, your opinion. If Christ doesn't come back, how long do you think America will last? Do you think we've got another 50, another 100 years in mm. us? And I think this is something that people have asked you as well. If if people are willing, there could be an awakening in America. Mm. Mm. That's true. And I believe we are very close to that awakening because we have been here before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yes, I am, I am a little uh, kind of discouraged 
But at the same time, I'm very, very, very hopeful because we have been at this point in history. We were there before the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right in the early 1700s. We were there after the Revolutionary War. I mean, keep in mind, First Great Awakening already took place, right. which led, I believe in many ways, it fueled the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. And then after the Revolutionary War, you would think that everybody would be like a born-again, solid, evangelical Christian. Like, shoot, guys, this worked. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. No, it actually, morals were down. Wow. Church attendance was down. Yeah. I would say, based on the best numbers, 20 to 25 percent was the max of our nation's population that was actually born again believers. Wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, 20 25%. Wow. This is, and you don't think that. No. Yeah. You you don't hear that, I should say. Yeah. Now, now people if we were to ask them they would say, "Yeah, I mean, I I'm 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 a they won't say Christian, they would say I am a member of a church or mm. I am you know, I attend whatever or my family is part of it. But are you do you have a personal relationship with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 25% would be a would would be a stretch. Yeah, mm. that's a good point. Would they say like outright no, I don't, or just kind of like? Uh, mm. I mean, they would not think of it as being important. Uh, just okay. like today. Gotcha. Wow. You have people who love the Lord, share the gospel, want to serve in church. They care about moral values. But don't you know people right now in your own family neighborhoods who are just like you, mm -hmm. and yet their spiritual acumen is very, very, very low. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. No desire for God in their lives. I mean, they live for the pleasure, for the fun, what's happening, these elections and everything. And, you know, we, we're saying like, hey, guys, you got to get out and vote and vote biblical values. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, eh, well, I mean, you know, I, uh, you know, it's, it's not a big deal oh, yeah, because overall everything works out. Hundred percent, or or yeah. Yeah, if it's if it's all going down anyway, I'll be there. I ain't got. But I just a, a take little, care of me and mine. I ain't got a, but a few years left in me, so I'll, let's just see what happens. That was very close to how people were in the 1780s, 1790s. Wow, mm. yeah. That's, well, that's that's encouraging to hear that this isn't a no, a novel thing that we've no. been here before. Yeah, it is. It's 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 um, jarring on one hand because you tend yeah. to think of that as like that's the, the like you said that's the dream time. That's when everybody's moral value is high. But really, it's no, that's not opposite. true at all. Yeah. Uh, and and that's why sometimes you know people try to paint the past of America as being this golden era until you get to the sixties. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. no, that's not <laughs> true. Case, that's yeah. not true. Yeah, we've been in through some bad situations. I mean, think about it. deism coming out of Europe had hit us very hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, Benjamin Franklin, one of our founding fathers, was a deist. Mm -hmm. Unitarianism. That's why John Adams, great guy. He's not my favorite. He was a Unitarian. Tell me, tell me uh, Unitarianism again. It means uh, kind of like the opposite of Trinitarianism. One guy and that's it. Yes, it. He, John Adams did not believe in Father, Son, Spirit. Mm. And he grew up Puritan. So now, <laughs> so, so what is Jesus? Is just, Jesus just was a teacher to him, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. So you see, so, so when you really examine that, you go, whoa, wait a minute. There's a problem here. Mm. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson, of course, yes, we're not sure. I would lean on the fact that, towards the side, that I believe he probably was a Christian. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a strong one, but I believe he was. Um, he thrived on being different, but he was not a John Adams. Mm -hmm. In fact, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson didn't even get along. Really? <laughs> yeah. I say all that to say this. Yes, we've been here before. Where we are in America, this moral low, we have been there mm -hmm. before. And so I have a lot of hope. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I think about all the sin that we're seeing in our um, in our nation today, and that does give us hope because we know that sin can't last. Sin will not be here forever. Mm -hmm. And and not only will it not be here forever, but it's not only that future redemption. It's not like it's only going to get downhill mm. until Christ comes back. You right, know what I mean? Right. Because if that's the case, why wait? You know right. what I mean? Why, why would I wait? Why would I continue living in this life if I thought it's only downhill from yeah. this point? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, it will ultimately go downhill and um, Christ will come. But in the meantime, we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to do everything possible, just like the first great awakening, second great awakening, the prayer revivals, um, uh, Sam Jones, D.L. Moody, Billy Sunday, Billy Graham, all these people have come. And what do they do? They they help fan the flame of revival. They help get people excited about the gospel, mm -hmm. get people saved. So that's what we got to do. Yeah. And they were being the salt and the light of the world. Yeah. They were uh, taking the gospels to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. Amen. 
If conditions are ripe, I mean, looking at the world and where we are now, looking at culture and, and the moral lows that we're seeing, if conditions are ripe for a revival, what is the spark that is needed? What is the, what is that turning point that we're looking for? Well, he, here's a passage that I want us to kind of focus on. It's chapter 24 in our book, mm -hmm. uh, 30 Days of Praying for Our Nation. Chapter th 24 is titled Righteousness, right. simply titled Righteousness. And we use Proverbs 14.34 as our baseline. It says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Mm -hmm. If we truly believe that the Bible is the Word of God, if we truly believe that this is the manual for life and our future as a nation, as a people, as a culture, then this works. Yeah, that's true. So what is the formula? Righteousness exalts a nation. Our nation right now is not exalted. Mm. Okay, uh, And what is the problem? The second half of the verse tells us sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah, we've got a big, big sin problem yeah. in right. America. So you want to change the trajectory of our nation, then we have to deal with sin, which means we have to call sin, sin. Right. That's why I'm talking to our Christians today. Stop talking about abortion as being okay. Right. Or a woman's right to choose. Or I don't want to infringe on other people's rights. Mm -hmm. You have to call sin, sin. If God calls abortion sin, then you got to call it sin. And if you're wondering why or where, well, I mean, just thou shalt not kill. Yeah, it's true because I think a lot of people are looking at policies. A lot of people are looking at legislature and they're they're not seeing it as individual sin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is this is not abortion, it's health care. Right. It, yeah. This is not this is not a moral issue. Quote quote I'm putting that in air quotes. This is not a moral issue. This is just uh, basic health care that women need or that people need. And so if you're taking away the individual morality out of these policies then it's very easy to say that yeah of course this is this is not only good it's needed yeah you know this is needed in our nation yeah let's talk about abortion for a few moments because it's a sin it's mm -hmm. a big sin and we have been reeling under the effects of Roe v Wade mm -hmm. yeah. and even though the laws have been overturned thank you to President Trump mm -hmm. and bringing the law back to the states mm -hmm. so that the states can decide and then if the states decide we want abortion I mean that's the states to decide we can right. keep fighting that battle right but at least we won't have this unilateral decision by the supreme court that this is how it is you just have to deal with it yeah. if we begin to deal with that as a sin then we have to repent of that sin right right and we have to do whatever we can to help make it right and not bad things we don't have to do violence to help that mm -hmm. what i mean by that is we have to share the gospel we mm -hmm. have to help people understand that god is holy that god has uh, created all of us, and he has created a little baby. Mm -hmm. And if that baby has been created by God, we know the Bible talks about Psalm 139, mm -hmm. for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, um, then I have to help fight for the right of the person who cannot fight for themselves. That's right. That's right. It's a sin, yeah. but I cannot just preach against it. I have to also then vote candidates who will fight for biblical values. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, we're, our weapons are not with um, uh, flesh and blood. Right. Our weapons are spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is a spiritual battle. This, this election is a spiritual battle. That's right. Mm. And it is a very, very old spiritual battle. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Uh, if you go back in time to uh, the time of the early Christians, and we're going back, you know, 2,000 some years, same thing was happening there in ancient Greece, in Rome. Um, Juvenal. Juvenal was a was a writer. You know, s wrote satire. Mm -hmm. He wrote that. How it is, I'm paraphrasing here. How seldom a gilded bed contained a pregnant woman because abortion was so easily available mm. to the rich people. Wow. How seldom a gilded bed can What does gilded like mean? Like, Gil like gold, like gold plated. Like, like a luxurious. Like a luxurious, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no pregnant woman in them because they can just wow. do what they want. They, they feel like that's their, their opportunity, was, their option. Baby was inconvenient. Right. Mm. Okay. So this is juvenile. If you want to find it, J U V E N A L, so it'll give you the time period in which he's talking about, okay? So he's talking about the rich. But did you know that the poor also had abortion? 
I'm sure. Uh, they did. They yeah. did. Okay, so uh, there would be people who would go out there and fool around, and and somebody would get pregnant, and they didn't want the child because mm. they were just having a good time. Guess what they would do? Have an abortion. Mm. Gosh. Yeah. So that is a sin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, and that that's not something that we in the 19th century for political purposes are are um, you know abusing abusing people's feelings and convictions. Now this is an old problem. No, it was a, yeah, it was a sin then, and it's yeah, a sin right. now. It just uh, the, the sophistication of the technology does not make what we're doing yeah. acceptable. Yeah, some of the reasons why people had abortion. Maybe we can talk more about this in the in sure. the future episodes. Uh, was um, one was to cover up illicit sex uh, sexual affairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, step out of the marriage and then like, oh, you're pregnant. Oh, we got to get rid of the baby. Sometimes it was because. Um, um, their bodies would change and they didn't want that. Yeah. No different than today. No different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it was um, uh, like Chrysostom. Remember Chrysostom, mm-hmm. the famous pastor? He said um, um, prostitutes, this is what he said about them. He said they had a view of drawing more money by being agreeable and an object of longing to their lovers. So because prostitutes wanted to look pretty and, mm-hmm. and be able to have, they would get rid of those get, babies. Get rid of it so their body their wouldn't body change. Would change. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Plato and Aristotle both recommended abortion to uh, to help the state. I didn't know that. Yikes. Yeah, to make sure that, you know, the state is taken care of and you have too many people, too many kids, it's going to mess things up. That's... Mm. Aristotle and Plato. That's bizarre. Wow. I didn't Were know that. Were for abortion. Yeah. So, I mean, I can go on and on. And there were many different means of abortion, even in the ancient times. By the way, did you find out when Juvenal lived? Uh, 55 AD is when he was born. So yeah, right, Shortly right after Jesus' 55 death. 55 to 128. So right about the time, uh, uh, you know, the New Testament was being written. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's, that's when this yeah. is. So this is not a New New part. Testament goes up to like 95 if you go, look at the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, he was so right overlapping. The, that, was, that was his prime. Yep. Yeah. Abortions could be chemical or mechanical. Hmm. Chemical in the sense of they could take uh, certain substances and drink them, and 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 that would we abort just terminate the baby, this, yes. terminate the baby, uh, or, or they could take even poison, drink that poison, and that would get rid of the baby. Mm. Um, like Celsus, Celsus talks about taking four grams of ammoniac salt and four grams of Cretan dittonine water and hedge mustard and tepid wine on an empty stomach. And this will expel the baby. Wow. Wow. I can't believe it. I mean, you know, people people think this is just something that, you know, <laughs> conservatives are today yeah, no, they, doing no, this. They think it's a modern oh, convenience no. that they're yeah. that, that's being taken away from them. And mechanical ones were, were really bad. I mean, um they 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 were horrible. They had a copper needle or a spike they would use. To extract the baby. Oh, mm. gosh. And, I mean, you're talking about at all ages. Yeah. Wow. Trimester. I can't I can't even imagine. So, so I mean, maybe we can talk about this a little more and, and to help people understand that what we're fighting for, I know there may be some people who are just like, uh, our side fights for abortions. I guess I got to si- fight side with abortion. But many of us are not doing it for that reason. Right. We're doing it because it's a biblical conviction. There's, right. there's a exactly. reason that this this one topic comes up most often is because it's such an egregious thing. Right. You know, it's not it, it's not. Um, and and I think we're we're meaning us the conservatives we're wise in doing this. We're not going to call it health care. We're not going no. to minimize what it's actually being done because that's right. the way that it's been done. No, that's we're not right. gonna we're not gonna sugarcoat it because it is horrific. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's it's, it's terrible. been given very soft. Um, pleasant language to distract from what is actually happening. Right. Yeah. So important. So important for us to engage in this conversation. I look forward to doing that in future episodes. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, write in and let us know, 252-582-5028. Or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget, you can partner with us financially on that same website. Scroll to the bottom, click that donate button, and let us know what's coming from our Clearview Today Show family. John, anything you want to plug as we end the show today? Absolutely. We're getting closer and closer to Election Day, 30 Days of Praying for America by Dr. Abadan Shah and his wife, Nicole. Also, our debut album, uh, 
Heaven Here and Now. I almost did it again. Heaven Here and Now is available on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere digital music is sold right now. Pick us, pick up a copy. Leave us a good review on iTunes and Spotify as well. Let us know what you think of the album. We hope it's a great resource for you and for your church. That's right. Make sure you guys join us tomorrow. Lots of great content coming your way. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.